I'll come at this from a different approach. Um, you mentioned what happens behind the scenes. Um, but I think we should look at what happened before the election. Um, they put a candidate up there. First it was Hillary Clinton and everybody was really mobilizing around Hillary Clinton. And then when um, it was seen that she was losing some steam and some ground, all of a sudden this candidate emerged, Barack Obama. And the anti-war movement and um, other movements in this country that were starting to gain momentum started to get behind Barack Obama because Hillary Clinton's big downfall was that she voted for the war. And the anti-war movement was really not behind her. So the powers that be, or these corporations, that now we see them lobbying relentlessly, especially healthcare industry right now. Um, I, I don't remember who said it, but uh, one of the Congress people was saying that it might have been Bernie Sanders, that he saw them with money actually paying off these Congress people so that they don't vote for health care, so that they take the public option out of the system, so that they put down single payer. But what happens is, so the anti-war movement and other in, in, others in the country saw this man rise to power, and so did the people in power. So did people in the ruling class that have the money, like the Democratic National Committee. They have tons of money. They're funded by the corporations, not only the Republican committee, but the Democrats. It's equally the same. It's the same amount of money. So here he comes, and he's now quelching the people that are now really gaining momentum, trying to get Bush out of office, trying to get the wars ended, trying to get their rights and standing up for themselves. The people of this country are mobilizing. He comes forward, and they see that, well, maybe they'll go behind this particular candidate, which they did. He was standing there saying, I'm going to escalate the Afghanistan war, as, as Kevin and Jeremy said. I heard it. He said that we're going to maybe withdraw some troops from Iraq. But he stood by the sofa. We were demanding that the sofa be introduced to Congress. Since it was introduced to the parliament in Iraq, why shouldn't Congress look at it and take a vote on it? But he didn't do that. That's the status of forces agreement. Right, the status of forces agreement. When he came into office. So he, they knew, they knew exactly what they were doing by putting him in office, by putting him out there, and he bought it lock, stock, and barrel. For whatever reason, he was never the anti-war candidate. He was never the one that was going to be the savior or the change. That was just rhetoric. And everyone bought it. And now we're all scratching our heads saying, wait a minute, he said he was change. Change for who? Certainly not for us. We're still here. Certainly not for the Iraqis or the Afghan people or in Pakistan or even the soldiers. There's a bigger GI resistance movement right now than we have ever seen. So I'm telling you that there's nothing behind the scenes after the election. It happens before the election, but we just don't see it because we're not paying attention to it. There was media hype around it. Here he is, the first African American that's won the nomination. He has the possibility of winning the White House. Everybody got behind him for that reason. And the corporations and the powers that be in this country stood back and watched, and they laughed at us. And that's exactly what they're doing now. So we have to be very careful about who they put up front and center. And, and the other thing as far as um, Lockheed Martin, Gene, it's true. I mean, I've been in protests where two or three people are there. But we look at Paula in Teaneck with MFSO. Now, they've been out there four years. And they had very, very small vigils. But they kept at it. And now they have people from the community joining them. It's the visibility. And eventually people get it. And that's the way this guard campaign is. Eventually people get it. And they want to join in. And they want to sign the petition. So we have to keep even the smallest amount of protests in the streets. Because people do see you. And they do go home and they sit there at their dinner table and they say, you know, those people were out there again today. And that's, 
Yeah, that's Lockheed Martin. What's that all about? So we did that at the Army Experience Center in Philly. And now we have, we have national and international media covering it. So that's what I want to say.